Today is a beautiful day for science. We just had a beautiful solar event, a corona mass ejection with a proton event that uh, we're already seeing the impacts of, and uh, it's just the S1 so far, which is impacting HF uh, frequencies and causing some minor blackouts for HF. But as is, this event is, um, I and mean, we're still seeing some secondary flares that are occurring now, but uh, it may not be over. Where it's just the most pivotal spot for the most part. Whoa. <laughs> Apologies. Um, we had the um, uh, the M. 6.3 as you can see on the DRAP here we can look at where the most focused point of that activity was impacting the earth uh, during that time and shortly thereafter there was a uh, radiation storm that had impacted us from the proton event that occurred this uh, proton event if I go over here let's go ahead and pull that up and we can see just how the uh, hardware in, uh, responds to this behavior, which is quite interesting. So you have this going, going, and then you'll see that it has, starts having registry issues picking up where the radiation is coming in at because this is a full-on radiation impact from those protons. Uh, granted, it's a very low amount, so nothing too significant. And what we're looking at here is SOHO. This is C2. This is giving us a nice view of how quickly this corona mass ejection is traveling. Now the event, uh, the CME actually came before the flare. It was a filament eruption that caused a instability within the region of 3229, which then caused the solar flare, the M6.3, uh, in which uh, we see here. So just before that event, this CME began to uh, well, occur. And this event is just quite gorgeous. It's a, a beautiful event overall. So let's go back to the very beginning, looking at SOHO. And so watching it from the beginning, we go to the, uh, well, let's go through it. So we can start to see its first showing right here. It's right at that little point, little cross point right there. And then as you can see that light up right there, and now here it is. This is right now about the, the meat of the corona mass ejection as it were. And continuing on getting a little bit more rampant, a little more large, vast area showing of it. And you can see it's it's got a very forward push to it. Like I said, it was slightly north. And that's just what we're seeing here. It's got a little more of that energy, that mass, going northward. We can see the majority of it getting cut off at this point here. But there is some wave 
point coming all the way to about right here. And same for here for the southern, we're starting to see the most of it cut off to about there. So the majority of this is actually going to the north slightly, but mostly westward. So we're not going to be impacted by the majority or the hardest amount of this or the, the most intense portion of that uh, plasma cloud. And that said, that's not it. There's more. <laughs> and uh, here we go. Now we're starting to get beyond the scope of C2. And you can start seeing a little more of that activity showing up all the way to this point here. So you can look at a little bit of the difference there. And right there for the southern. And right here for the northern so far. And then as we go to a little further, we're seeing that he pushes even a little more. So now we're at this point. Going frame by frame here, making sure I get this as correct as possible. Yeah, we are a little bit over on this. And so what we have is basically a partial halo. We didn't get quite the full halo I had expected, but we did get a partial halo. This will, in fact, uh, impact Earth, and it is traveling rather fast. So showing up as quick as it did, we're talking maybe a 36 to 42 hour time span before we start seeing impacts of this, maybe even sooner. And now what we're seeing with these uh, specs, the static on the SOHO imagery, is this is actually from that proton event. It's actually interfering with the imagery on the uh, C2. So we're getting basically uh, radiation interference. So that is SOHO's scan of that event. Let's take a look at it from the core 2 from stereo ahead. And we'll do the same thing. Now, stereo ahead is slightly to the Earth's left behind us coming up in orbit and slightly closer to the sun. We get maybe a single day scope of observation of solar surface than uh, what we get just by looking head on. Uh, from our own imagery from SDO and uh, GOES imagery. So it's not a huge uh, advance anymore, but in the coming about July of this year, this, uh, the stereo ahead is going to actually bypass the location of Earth and hopefully continue to operate as it then begins to be actually ahead of Earth's orbit, meaning more than one ways is it stereo ahead again. <laughs> But uh, that means it would have gone an entire cycle around the sun quite beautifully. All right, and here we go. Let's take a look at how this plays out. So we can see the initial right there. It's a little more difficult to see. The resolution is not as nice, but that's all right. All right, we have it going to here. All right, we're getting some flow, some flow here and. streamer. We're over here. Yeah. So right there. Okay, we can see some actual plasma flow from this point and this point over here. So basically getting the same scope, which tells me that uh, the analysis from looking at SOHO was rather accurate. Again, mostly going to the west, but this will encompass Earth. But a beautiful little sight to see here and uh, to understand what's happening and 
to what will be impacting Earth on that basis. So as such, it's going to be a fast-moving solar storm. There is a lot of material that's coming from it. And it will probably be, be impacting Earth as uh, early as maybe, I, I would say, uh, based on rudimentary, rudimentary, <laughs> rudimentary uh, guess, as it were, uh, based upon doing these before, I would say probably about another 32 hours at minimum. But uh, I'll go ahead and do the math a little bit later when we have more imagery under the uh, Soho C3. Speaking of which, let's see if it's showing up on that as of yet. And we'll let that run its cycle while we find out. <clears throat> Yeah, change of plan since it's uh, not giving me the scope I want. We'll go ahead back and take a look at it from this perspective, which is uh, a little more detailed anyhow. So looking at the uh, the tool once again for this. Go back up there. And we are going to go ahead and take a quick observation of this event from the very beginning. There we go. So again, Bring this around over here. I need to bring this around over here. Bring this around over here. And let's see where we can measure. Right? And we have it's starting to show up here. You can already see some of that northern push of plasma. But for the most part, it's not pushing as far south just yet. But as I said, it's oh, we're starting to see a little bit of that lighter cloud. And that's most of that's coming from the chronomass ejection that occurred almost simultaneously at region 32, uh, 35. So now we're already past to that point over here. And of course the center go over here to the biggest area. There's a, look at all that beautiful plasma right there. You can see actually a little bit of plasma kind of reaching out. It's very light, very faint. Right there. There it is. Right there. So that's not exact, but uh, we can see this showing up on the C2 or C3 already. So given a little time, let's see if we can calculate speed.
Okay, I was a little bit off. It looks like about 28, 28 hours before we start seeing uh, some impact as early as 20 hours. Uh, give a 12 hour leeway. So 28 to 40 hours is my estimation for seeing the chronomass ejection from the M, actually the filament eruption that caused the M6.3 uh, joint filament eruption that occurred initially at 3229 and then subs subsequently directly after almost at the same time right over 3235. 3234 region 3234 which is the furthest to the east or the left side move this out of the way so we have 3229 is this region right here where the, everything initially began it was a filament eruption <clears throat> shortly after that <clears throat> I mean like almost instantaneously <laughs> had another filament eruption that occurred right over 3225 and all we had that I can see still from looking at some of the imagery is that some subsequent solar uh, isolated solar flare activity occurred at 3234 which is this region here so as such uh, I do not think we're out of the woods yet with these trio of regions coming across there is a lot of potential all three I would say have potential of an x-class flare most significant significantly is 3235 and 33 uh, 3229 which are the left two and this would be the western side this would be the eastern side so the two western regions and uh, of that 3229 is getting pretty close to being out of the scope of the strike zone uh, however this was such a significant large CME that it, a CME can expand up to 31 mile, million miles in diameter has been seen to that's a massive cloud so coming from even that far to the west close to the rim still encompasses the earth with such a magnitude or size of an event so that's basically the update looks like we're going to see uh, that ongoing out once again I'm gonna create a high resolution imagery video to include later but for now that's just gives us a nice little update what's going on and what to expect um, probably 28 to 48 hours 28 to 40 hours that we'll see a chronomass ejection from this impact earth magnetosphere and cause geomagnetic activity I would not be surprised to see up to G2 levels and that's that's basically it so <laughs> cheers and science on